So, stop me if you've heard this one before. A young man spots a beautiful woman on the side of the road and gives her a ride home. But after he drops her off, he realizes she left her jacket in his car. So he goes back to her house, only to be greeted by an older woman who says the girl doesn't live there. Once he describes his former passenger, the woman says he just perfectly described her daughter, who died in a car accident years ago on that very stretch of road he picked her up on. Sounds familiar, right? The vanishing hitchhiker legend has been around for at least a hundred years, and its origins probably stretch back even further. Let's explore the legend of the vanishing hitchhiker. There are literally hundreds of different versions of this legend, all with different details. But the basic story, at least here in the United States, goes something like this. A man is driving alone late at night when he sees a beautiful woman on the side of the road looking for a ride. He picks her up and she gives him directions to her house. When they get there, she thanks him for the ride and goes inside. But later that night or the next day, the man realizes that she left something in his car, usually an item of clothing like a jacket or scarf, maybe a pack of cigarettes. Now knowing where the woman lives, he goes back to her house to deliver the object she forgot. But once he gets there, he's greeted by a relative of the woman, her mother, maybe her sister. The relative explains to the man that the woman actually died years ago on that same stretch of road. Sometimes the man will learn that the clothes she was wearing were the clothes she was buried in, or that she appears every year on the anniversary of her death. In some versions, the man actually gives the woman his jacket, but she forgets to give it back. When he goes back to the house, he learns the truth about the woman. Then he goes to the cemetery where she was buried, having been given the directions from the woman's mother or sister, and he finds his jacket on her gravestone, folded neatly at the bottom. So that's the basic version that you've probably heard a million times. There are way too many different versions to go over here. It would take all day. But I want to talk about just a few different variations. Some of them you may have heard of, some of them not. Believe it or not, the earliest similar story appears in the Bible. A passage in the book of Acts tells the story of the Apostle Philip who is traveling to Gaza and meets an Ethiopian man. Now an angel of the Lord said to Philip, Go south to the road, the desert road, that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. So he started out, and on his way, he met an Ethiopian eunuch, an important official in charge of all the treasury of the Kandake, which means queen of the Ethiopians. This man had gone to Jerusalem to worship, and on his way home was sitting in his chariot, reading the book of Isaiah the prophet. The spirit told Philip, Go to that chariot and stay near it. Then Philip ran up to the chariot and heard the man reading Isaiah the prophet. Do you understand what you are reading? Philip asked. How can I, he said, unless someone explains it to me. So he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. This is the passage of scripture the eunuch was reading. He was led like a sheep to the slaughter, and as a lamb before its shearer is silent, so he did not open his mouth. In his humiliation, he was deprived of justice. Who can speak of his descendants? For his life was taken from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, Tell me, please, who is the prophet talking about, himself or someone else? Then Philip began with that very passage of scripture and told him the good news about Jesus. As they traveled along the road, they came to some water and the eunuch said, Look, here is water. What can stand in the way of my being baptized? And he gave orders to stop the chariot. Then both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the spirit of the Lord suddenly took Philip away and the eunuch did not see him again, but went on his way rejoicing. So this story is a little bit different than the one you're probably used to hearing. But another more modern story that more closely follows the traditional formula tells of a woman known as Lydia the Phantom Hitchhiker. Lydia is said to haunt a curvy stretch of US 70A in North Carolina. She wears a white evening dress and desperately tries to flag down motorists. If someone offers her a ride, she gets in and introduces herself as Lydia, saying she's on her way home from a dance. In some versions, she's a bit younger and is on her way home from prom. Lydia gives the driver her address, but if the driver attempts to make conversation beyond that, Lydia seems like she is in another world. When the driver gets to Lydia's house, 
she's disappeared from the back seat. The driver, usually a man, rings the doorbell and is greeted by an older woman. He explains what happened and the woman shows him a photograph of her daughter Lydia, who died in a car accident on that stretch of road in 1923. She also informs the driver that Lydia has done this before. She thinks her daughter doesn't realize she's dead and is just trying to get home. But as with many of these legends, it can't be historically verified. Nobody named Lydia died in a car crash in 1923 in that area. However, a 30-year-old woman named Annie Jackson did die in a car crash on that same stretch of road in 1920. Other sources say the girl's real name was Mary. Perhaps there was a mixing up of the names, but if the ghost is real, is she really the ghost of Annie Jackson? I'll let you decide. Another popular vanishing hitchhiker story is Resurrection Mary, which I've talked about in a video before. Mary's story dates back to the 1930s, when usually male drivers would report seeing a beautiful woman outside a dance hall in the suburbs of Chicago. When they picked her up, Mary would tell them she was leaving a dance and give them her home address. But when the driver arrived at the address Mary had given him, he was parked in front of Resurrection Cemetery. He would park the car and Mary would get out and walk a few steps to the cemetery before disappearing into thin air. Just like Lydia, it's not really clear who Mary was in real life. Unsurprisingly, she is said to be buried in Resurrection Cemetery, and there are a few different women there who people believe she might be. Like I said, I did talk about this in an older video. It's not very good, but if you want to check it out for yourself, feel free. I don't know if you're familiar with the show Beyond Belief Fact or Fiction. The premise of the story involves a narrator presenting the audience with five different short dramatizations, all with some sort of bizarre, seemingly inexplicable happenings. At the end of the show, viewers get to find out whether these stories were based on true events or made up, and see if their guesses were correct. I used to watch the show all the time when I was a kid. I couldn't find the exact episode, but there was one that featured a story similar to the vanishing hitchhiker legend. The man who picked the woman up was greeted at the door by the woman's sister, who told him that the woman had died in an accident. The man and the sister of his dead passenger ended up getting married. But as romantic as this is, the story of course turned out to be complete fiction. There is another popular legend that is similar to the vanishing hitchhiker story. A motorist, again, usually male, is flagged down by a woman while he's driving at night. The woman seems desperate and tells the man that she's just been in a car accident and her baby is still trapped inside. She leads the man to the wreck but then disappears. The man of course finds the baby inside and is able to save them, but he also finds the woman's body in the car and it's clear that she died in the car crash or shortly thereafter. Hawaii has its own version of this legend. In this one, motorists encounter an old woman climbing a volcano. They offer her a ride and she accepts, but later disappears from the back seat. As it turns out, the woman is Pele, the Hawaiian goddess of fire and volcanoes. She often appears to mortals and asks for their aid, punishing those who refuse. In African tradition, the vanishing hitchhiker usually turns out to be a jenny which I really hope I'm pronouncing right. It's the singular form of a djinn, which is a word you may have heard before, probably on Supernatural. The djinni, or genie, is a popular mythical creature in Africa and the Middle East. Djinn were evil spirits that sometimes took the form of animals and were often said to possess men. The last version I wanna share is a Spanish urban legend called La Chica de la Curva, or the Curve Girl. Not because she was curvy, but because she haunted a particular curve in the road. There are a few different versions of this one, but this is the one I could find the best translation for. A man is making his way home from work one night, and it's storming outside. As he drives down a particular stretch of road, he remembers the legends of the girl who supposedly haunts it, but he never really believed them. That is, until the woman appears in his back seat. This is reminiscent of The Woman in White of Stockton, California, which I've also talked about before. But it's difficult to feel too bad for this man. As it turns out, he was actually the one who hit this girl and killed her on that road. So she kills him in revenge. Honestly, I did not see this ending coming the first time I heard the story. 
Maybe I'm just an idiot. So clearly the Vanishing Hitchhiker legend is very widespread with stories from all over the world. But where did it originally come from? In the early 1940s, two researchers set to find out just that. Richard K. Beersley and Rosalie Hankey did two studies on the legend, trying to connect it to an origin story, but ultimately failing to do so. Their first study, The Vanishing Hitchhiker, was published in 1942 in a journal then known as California Folklore Quarterly. Beardsley and Hankey connected 79 stories from 60 different cities across the United States and one from Mexico, trying to find the one the story originated from. They also compared and contrasted different versions. They initially thought the origin story came from one of the stories they collected, a story that happened in Berkeley, California in the 1930s. But once they researched the story they'd heard, it turned out no fatal accidents of that sort had occurred in Berkeley at the time. They ultimately concluded that the story had modern origins since they couldn't find any versions of it that definitively dated any further back than 1912. Their next study was called A History of the Vanishing Hitchhiker and was published the next year. In this one, they further solidified their conclusion that the story was a modern one. The story may have gotten inspiration from older stories, but was essentially a newer story, at least in the incarnation we're used to hearing. They also noted that the phenomenon of ghosts appearing in human form was also a relatively modern thing, not really happening very frequently until the 1800s or so. So is the legend really a modern one? Well, sort of. The story usually involves an automobile, which would kind of give that away. But the story has been appearing in various versions even further back than Beardsley and Hanky knew. Remember, they collected stories largely within the continental United States, along with one in Mexico and one in Hawaii. They even admitted in their second study that they hadn't been able to collect stories from places like Europe, South America, and Canada. And as we've already seen, the story stretches far wider across the globe than that. In 1998, another paper was published in that journal, now called Western Folklore. Two more researchers found several more versions of the story that dated far further back than the 1800s. One I found particularly interesting came from Sweden and dates back to 1602, in which two travelers encountered a girl on the road who predicted wars and plagues before promptly disappearing. There are many different versions, even of the modern legend that involved prophesying vanishing hitchhikers, or hitchhikers that turned out to be some sort of angelic beings. I'm not familiar enough with Swedish history to know if these prophecies actually came true. But given how many wars and plagues there have been throughout history, they probably did. So we've talked about the story, different versions, and potential origins. But one other question remains. Why is the story so compelling? Why have people kept retelling it for dozens, maybe even hundreds of years all over the world? Regardless of the version or details, most of these stories have some sort of element we can easily identify with. The driver is usually an ordinary person, giving the impression that something like this could happen to us. It also speaks to the dangers of hitchhiking, which are all too real, even today. I recently did a video on the Santa Rosa Hitchhiker Murders, in which at least seven young women were brutally murdered while hitchhiking in or near Santa Rosa, California. Those murders remain unsolved to this day. Hitchhiking is clearly dangerous for passengers, but something that's not often talked about is the potential danger for drivers. The Vanishing Hitchhiker legend reminds us that if we pick up a hitchhiker, no matter how good our intentions, we never really know who we're letting into our cars. As I've noted several times already, the standard version of this story usually involves a male driver picking up a beautiful young woman and offering her a ride. Obviously, this man's intentions could be less than honorable. He might want to get into more than just her house, if you know what I mean. But it could also say something about the instinct that most men have to protect women. The versions with prophesying hitchhikers speak to our desire to know what's coming. 
and ghost stories in general speak to our uncomfortableness with tragic deaths. Nobody likes hearing about a young person dying or anyone dying a violent death. Ghosts in Western culture are often thought to have unfinished business. And surely they would come back to Earth to finish doing whatever they were doing when their lives were cut short. The similar version with the ghost mother saving her baby could speak to a mother's instinct to protect her children. Most mothers wouldn't be able to come back from the dead to save their baby's lives, but they would certainly give their own lives to keep their children safe. Another interesting theory I found deals with how the story morphed from an ordinary one to something paranormal. I found it on Reddit, which, as I've been discovering over the past few months, is a very interesting place. The post was made by a user named Winnowing Winds on a post about the vanishing hitchhiker legend. I imagine some of these stories are rooted in deep exaggeration. Guy drives a hitchhiker home. He realizes she left her sweater in his car and drives back to her house to return it. The person who answers the door says, uh, Dorothy Smith doesn't live here. Guy goes to bar and tells his friends. Friends tell their friends and suddenly, Dorothy Smith's been dead for 15 years even though that's not what was said. The explanation, meanwhile, is rather simple. Dorothy decided not to tell a stranger where exactly she lived and had him drop her off a block away from her actual house. Or maybe Dorothy's mother didn't approve of a strange man calling on her daughter, even just to return something, and pretended not to know Dorothy. They also served as cautionary tales. Even when hitchhiking was very common, people still realized there was a risk. Stories like these point out that you don't really know who you're letting ride in your car. Of course, I already discussed the theory about the dangers of hitchhiking, but this possible explanation for the truth behind the stories is, as this user said, surprisingly simple. It reminds me of the stories you hear where a man catches a fish that gets bigger every time he tells the story. Or the game Telephone that you may have played in elementary school where one person whispers a message to a person in the class and then the message goes around the class and by the time it gets to the last person it's completely different. That game is usually done by teachers specifically to show how rumors get started. And really, this theory could apply to a lot of the paranormal stories I talk about on this channel. The last story I want to revisit is the biblical one. Even though I grew up in church and have read the Bible, okay, most of the Bible, I wasn't actually familiar with this story before I started researching this video. Remember, the story involves Philip encountering an Ethiopian man on the way to Gaza. The Ethiopian is reading a Bible passage and asks Philip to explain it. Philip ministers to the man who decides to be baptized. Then after the baptism, Philip promptly disappears. This story is apparently supposed to be about how God often has plans for us that we don't expect. And also about how if we really want to be baptized and become Christians, nothing is really going to stop us. Note the water conveniently appearing when they needed it. Obviously, not everyone watching my videos is religious, so this might not apply to you. But I do wonder if this story at least partially influenced the vanishing hitchhiker legend we know today. Or if it is, in fact, maybe even the oldest version of the story. Hey everyone, Editing Mary here. Please excuse my more disgusting than usual appearance. So I'm an idiot and probably should have thought to do this before I filmed the video, but as I was editing, I decided to ask my dad about this story, who of course was a Methodist pastor for more than 40 years. And he said the story was basically just another example of how the message of Jesus was spread throughout the world. So obviously the story was never really meant to be a ghost story, but I do wonder if it had any sort of kind of unintentional influence on the vanishing hitchhiker story that we know today. So what do you think of this ubiquitous legend? What other versions have you heard that you found interesting? Have you ever had your own experience with an incident like this, whether directly or hearing it from a friend or a friend of a friend, as the saying goes? Let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and share it. And for more dark content, I hope that you will consider subscribing and hitting that bell. Thanks so much for watching and have a creepy day. Bye guys. That game is usually done by teachers. Oh my god!